United States would let him dredge Biscayne Bay. Told him that's the only reason he told his people to take the train to Key West. He wanted our harbor. He would get it. it. Took seven years to build that train down. They built 47 bridges under Hippie Water and Mangrove Swamps to connect the 40 Keys, and one of them was seven miles long. Crossed the lines of 160 men. 120 of these deaths in one day, thanks to that magnificent hurricane. And one land or
they are so talented. And there are sand art competitions all over the world. They're really good, as you can tell. I can just get a bucket and fill it with sand and turn it upside down and say it's uh, the Alamo or something. Oh, and there's one other thing I'm going to point out over here. You may have noticed these trees with the large clusters of scarlet blossoms. There's one ahead of us. Have you noticed these? Okay, this is Royal Poinciana. The Latin name is Delarux Regia, which means Royal Conspicuous Claw. If you get one blossom out of that cluster, it's got five petals shaped in like a claw. They're very messy. They are not indigenous to the Western Hemisphere. They were planted by the Spanish. And they're very high canopy. But the summer belongs to the Royal Poinciana. You can see them in bloom all over the island. Come back in a couple of months, they'll be more in bloom. And if you get high up on the island, looking down on this beautiful green island, you can see every single one of them. And it looks like it's splotched in red paint. So it's really cool. Okay. This, uh, this silver uh, wood here, the silver leaves of the silver buttonwood, uh, they get about four times that size, and it's the fourth densest wood in the Western Hemisphere. It won't, but your buttonwood won't float, not even in salt water. Now, some guys will like to tell you that they got the name buttonwood because they colored buttons out of that wood. Maybe they did. But if you look close at that tree, you'll see little round inedible berries that look like buttons. That's how it got the name. And just for if anybody asked, I did not do what I just did. I did not make that detail. Anyway, we're back on the pool ground when I turn left here. And our next stop is Stop 11. Uh, that is the closest to the southernmost point in the Butterfly Conservatory. We're going to go right by the southernmost point of the trolley. But if you wanted to get out, walk down, take a picture, come back and hop on another trolley, this next stop will let us go to your closest here. Just from the other side of this coming intersection, we'll stop me up. Here's some more buttonwoods here. There's actually another buttonwood tree that's called a green buttonwood. It's literally identical, except it has a green shiny leaves instead of silvery looking leaves. And the, both those leaves are designed by nature to hold as much moisture in that plant as possible. The green shiny leaves reflect sunlight. It's called albinism. Alright. Stop eating that. It's something much more stuff. And there's a car parking right where it says us. I am not having oh, but Freddie's gonna get look at Freddie there. Freddie's all over. You can't park there. Get it, Fred? His daddy and I used to shop together at the old Hookie Lot. Freddie's going, see that Charlie behind me? Get my horn. I can't get right on the sidewalk, so I'm just going to pull over so there's no cars that'll be coming that side. This is stop 11. Southernmost points a block, of, block and a half ahead of us. Anybody want to get out here? Okay. Just guys, watch your step. You guys got any questions? Freddie here in that green shirt. You know what we I'd really appreciate it if you told Freddie he needs a haircut. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You got a baby? Yeah. Thank you. You are the here the stuff we can't talk about. Uh, in, in northern Scotland, the high of those mountain ranges at the top of Scotland, what time they were together because of uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Go off a couple of dollars. Well, it's the same, it's the same, uh, it's the same material. It's, it's literally the same amount. You got it, man? Bye.
Anybody else? Okay. Bring them on, Fred. Welcome back. Get your pictures. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought everybody was out there showing out. That's okay, baby. That's the way it works. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's the way it works. Come on, man. Waiting on you. That's it? Okay. Welcome back, guys. This guy is 614 at 11. Now, I normally drive the train. This is a story that I don't get to talk about. So I'm on the trolley. I like this story. So what you think? There's a house coming up on the right-hand side. Not a house, but a hotel called the Southern Miss Beach Resort. But what used to be on this property is a beautiful two-story white house that was built and lived in by Eduardo Gato Jr., who was a very successful cigar manufacturer. Now, later in his life, he didn't like the way there was a setting sun in his balcony. So he had it picked up, turned around, and moved right across the street. And ahead on the right, on the other side of that yingling chuck, that two-story white house used to be right here, facing the other way. But when we go by, you can read the address above the door, and it's in state plans. It reads 1327. See that? Well, that is an odd number, but that is the even side of the street. I'm always like that. On the left corner, built in 1899 by Judge Bonnie Harris, Southern Mass House, has beautiful Queen Anne architecture. Now, we call that the Southern Mass Town for years until a woman named Thomas the Strable came to town. Dr. Strable was a novelist and had written a book called Read the Wild Winds about our wrecking industry. She moved to Key West in 1941 and moved her head to the South to Judge Harris. And Thelma had a great sense of humor. Look here on the left at her little gate. See if you can read the plaque she stuck next to. It reads, the southernmost, southernmost house. That's Thelma's son. And this is the southernmost point. Now this red, black, and yellow market really marks as far south as you get down there to the U.S. without getting the wind. And it's going to read 90 miles to Cuba. How far is it? It's 93. Anybody from Texas? You're actually 86 miles from the south of Brownsville, Texas, right now. That seems to upset the city of Brownsville. I'm not sure why. But we're now the southernmost trolley in America, watching the southernmost tourists take their southernmost pictures in the southernmost point. Now, I told you guys who were with me that the Navy owns more property on the island than anyone, and they do by far. And on the left, behind that hedge of silver buttonwood, is Naval Air Station Truman Air House. That's where our jet pilots and their families live. So I'm going to get up here and you look at the gate. You might want to say, Kenny, that's a rather secure gate for residential areas. And it is. Truman then acts as also the headquarters of the Joint Caribbean Task Force Command. And it's where our local seal attachment reaches other branches of service on hold the breath underwater. I don't know what you think of the Navy, but they got talent and dedication. Kids, I grew up in this Navy town. Exactly why I joined the U.S. Army. That and a baseball scholarship. That's another story. Okay, have you seen any chickens tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. Hey, yeah, roosters and chickens. It's a male chicken. Now, if you Google on your phone, when you get time, Google something called Red Jungle Fowl, and you'll be looking at a Key West rooster. Now, these are gallows gallows. These are wild birds. They were left by the Spanish 500 years ago. They were left on purpose. I'm going to say no, they were not. But I guarantee you, at least one boy and one girl chicken got left behind. And man had not established this island yet, so there were no ground predators for these birds. There were no dogs, no cats, no hogs, 
Oh, man. So over about 275 years, this island was chicken nirvana. And they flourish. Now man settles the island. And we're going to use the checkers for that explosion and for cockfighting. But 87 years ago, Key West and Montgomery County became part of a very large bird sanctuary. And the chickens on this island would declare wild bird of the wing by the U.S. government. And overnight, protected by 18 state and federal laws. You cannot touch these birds, they're wild. They're protected. And my wife and I are birders. We love the chickens. Every chicken you see will hit their weight every month and insect. And scorpion. We got these little yellow and brown scorpions on the island. The chickens love them. We love them. They're not deadly scorpions. Speaking from experience, you gotta run your Saturday if you step on one barefoot. That takes me to my next stop. This is stop 12. Now this is the closest to the Hemingway House and the Lighthouse in my house. The Hemingway House from here is a block to the left at this intersection. The Lighthouse is a block to the left at the intersection. My house is two blocks to the left. I'm not going to get right on it because there's a scooter park here that should not be there. I've got to take myself through to get out. Did anybody get here out here? Oh, okay. I couldn't get further up because of that scooter. So. Well, you're accommodating. Never play this girl poker for real money because you're going to lose it. Come on. Who is it? Oh, okay. Who wants that next one? If you live here, we know you. Okay. Don't let that train pull out with me here. Oh, he knows better. I said if you speak Spanish, please raise your hand. Now, we've celebrated an anniversary of 512 years, or 10 years. It was 1513 that the first European man said, put here, and that would be the Spanish. When the Spanish arrived, they found the same thing that you're looking at. They went out the houses and hotels. But they found something else. They found bones. They found a lot of human bones. Now, indigenous peoples have been in the main city of and hunter gatherers for well over 2,000 years. Palusa, Corini, Paracope. I can't tell you whether the bands of Spanish found were burial ground or battle ground, and no one can. I can tell you only what Spain called the island on their maps. They call it Bone Island. And in Spanish, Cayo Hueso. We are still Cayo Hueso, or Bone Island in Spanish. Now, the name Key West is a very bad translation of those two Spanish words in the English. Cayo means key or little wagon. Somebody called hueso is west. Experts call it corruption of sound. My PhD, Canadian wife, calls it transliteration. You don't know me, but you can believe me when I say from my heart, my friends, welcome to Key West, and I mean that it does not cost me a dime to say it. If you spoke nothing but Spanish, I would say, Por mi coro, mi amigos. Bienvenidos a Cayo Hueso. Bienvenidos a Cayo Hueso. Welcome to the land. What I'm going to do my next stop. Now, this is stop 13. This is my last stop before I finish in my respect. This is between the 6 and the 700 block. Now the Hemingway House is two blocks, one block down, 